Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up and today we have our look at some of the games coming out next week on the Nintendo Switch. There seems to be quite a varied list of games coming out next week on the Switch, with examples including Farm Sims, a classic racing game, a couple of RPGs, a horror game and a few more. But is it a wallet buster or do those moths have a home for another week at least? Well, let's find out. First up then, releasing on the 16th, we have Summer in Mara, which is a farm life simulator with crafting mechanics, albeit it's set on a tropical archipelago. Now I believe this actually came about via a Kickstarter campaign, and it promises to have an open ocean with over 20 islands to explore, the means to let you customise your own island with buildings, crops and farm animals, over 25 characters to meet along your way, more than 300 quests, plus a day and night cycle as well. Having just watched the trailer, it looks lovely to be fair, with a really colourful 3D world having been created, and looks like it could be a really relaxing experience. It reminds me very much actually of a game that's already on the Switch called Stranded Sails, a game that I played and very much enjoyed, so if it's anything like that one, this could well be a bit of a hit. Next up then on the 17th we have Edna and Harvey The Breakout Anniversary Edition. Now this is a point and click game that came out in 2008 originally and I just read that it started as a university project in Germany. I believe it was heavily inspired by the early LucasArts games so you'll have that classic 2D setting as well as the verbs at the bottom of the screen that you'll use to try and deduce and solve a variety of problems. Now as much as I like point and click games I'm not any sort of authority on them, it's not a genre that I played as much as a child not like Mark who no doubt by now would be telling you that Guybrush Fleetwood is the best man in the universe and that he's rubber and I'm glue or something, I don't know. But it looks as if this one did get mixed to positive reviews when it came out, what, 12 years ago now. Oh and by the way, I have played Monkey Island 1 and 2, I'm not a complete philistine. Hello? Druggle Jug. Is that your name? Druggle Jug. Am I not allowed in there? Druggle Jug. <sighs> what a guy. So this is the path? Also on the 17th we have a game called Across the Grooves from Novabox. This is an interactive graphic novel set in a magical realism universe, so says the blurb. It goes on to say that your decisions will affect the main character named Alice and each decision will drastically change her reality, allowing her to explore alternative destinies. It goes on to say you'll be travelling across European cities, meeting a host of colourful characters and solving a mystery as you go. As you would expect by a game called Across the Groove, it's heavily music inspired and the music actually adapts to the decisions you make, reflecting the mood of the characters for each scene. There are multiple story paths with a variety of endings as well and it's selling for a price of £15.99, which is actually not too bad considering the prices that some visual novels go for on the Switch. Next on the 18th there's a game called Hakoniwa Explorer Plus which sells at £10.79 or your regional equivalent which will be on the screen now. This one's been out on Steam for a couple of years by the looks of it, although I must admit I'd never heard of it before, and my first impressions were I really loved the isometric view. It reminded me a bit of Equinox on the Super Nintendo, aesthetically at least anyway. Then I started reading the blurb and I, I've got to read some of this to you, you'll like this. So it says... It's an action RPG about getting beaten down, wrapped up, hip checked and straight up eaten by cute female monsters. He goes on to say that the main character is basically an unemployed hobo, that you have to make do with crappy weapons, that you can take your pick from a wide variety of swimwear, including some that's actually for swimming and some that's just for show, and that most of the monsters are soft, cute, sadistic girls. I don't really know what to say after reading that to be honest. I suppose if you like isometric ARPGs, female monsters, swimwear, crap weapons, or hobos, then this game's got you covered. There you go. Next then is a game called One Way Heroics Plus, which is actually from the same people that made the last game, although this one doesn't seem quite as crazy. It has quite an interesting premise by the sounds of it, and I think again this one's been out on Steam for a little while. 
It's an RPG where you have to keep moving towards the right otherwise you get caught by the darkness. So even whilst fighting enemies or stopping in towns, the screen will continue to scroll so you have to be very careful with your time. So it's basically a roguelike. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, of all the genres to merge a roguelike with, RPG sounds like a terrible idea. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's very good. If you've played it before, perhaps you can let me know. But either way, that one comes out on the 18th. Next up then is a game called Ruiner, published by Devolver Digital, and they are one company that really seem to be able to pick a game to publish, I can tell you. This is a top-down shooter set in the year 2091, where you play as a sociopath lashing out against a corrupt system. It has a cyberpunk aesthetic, a real dystopian vibe to it, and it looks absolutely amazing, I've just watched the trailer. It's been out elsewhere for a couple of years now and has received very positive reviews, and you'll be collecting gadgets along the way to help you with the combat. The main character looks awesome, it's got a real Neo Tokyo vibe about it, and while £17.99 perhaps pushes it out of impulse by territory, it certainly looks worth the money, at least as far as first impressions can ever go. And next we have a game called Working Zombies. I'm not really sure what to make of this one, this is really strange. It's basically a collection of four games, so I assumed it would be a mini game collection, but three of the games are effectively the same thing. You play as a flight attendant, a nursery nurse, or a hairstylist, and they're basically Dino Dash clones by the looks of it, but then the fourth game, where you play as a plumber, looks like a Pipe Mania clone. So I'm not really sure why they had three of the four games be the same and then one be completely different, it just seems a bit weird. I suppose if you like Diana Dash, you're going to be in your element here with three of the games being the same. But selling for £17.99, that's the same price as the game Ruiner just now. Just let that sink in for a minute. Next up, and probably the biggest release for the week, this is Burnout Paradise Remastered, obviously made by Criterion, but published by Electronic Arts. This originally came out back in 2008 for the Xbox 360, the PS3 and Windows, and was an open world racer where you raced along the streets of Paradise City. This remastered version comes with eight pieces of extra content, over 130 vehicles, new areas to explore, such as Big Surf Island, online challenges, a frame rate of 60 frames per second, and a pinch and pull touchscreen map. I never played this one back in the day, I played a lot of the Burnout games, but not this one in particular, so it'll be interesting to see how it comes across to the Switch. Obviously we've had some big ports recently with the Bioshock and the Borderlands games, as well as the Outer Worlds, and the ports on all of those games have been of varying quality, shall we say, so I'm intrigued to see which camp Burnout Paradise will reside in once it's released. The penultimate game for the week then is Railway Empire Nintendo Switch Edition. This is a tycoon simulation game which came out on Windows in 2018 and then the Xbox One and PS4 in early 2019. Set in the United States in 1830, you are looking to establish the most powerful and dominant railway empire in the whole of North America. This Nintendo Switch Edition features the additional content Mexico, the Great Lakes and Crossing the Andes, all of which unlocks new scenarios, additional soundtracks as well as new locomotives. There are challenges to meet and objectives to pass, as well as over 40 historically accurate locomotives and more than 30 different wagons. £35.99 is pretty expensive, although I'm sure you get your money's worth, but I think there is a physical version of this game coming and I would like to think it's a game that would drop in price over time so even if you just have a mild interest that may be something to keep an eye on. And the final game I'm going to highlight for this week is the Coma 2 Vicious Sisters which is following its predecessor onto the Switch and will be selling for £11.99. Now I did play the first game and if it's anything like that, it's set in a school where something has gone very awry and you will be looking for resources and at times having to hide from a creature that looks very much like your teacher. 
In fact, having just read the blurb on the eShop, it sounds exactly like that, except this time you are playing as Mina Park, a young lady, as opposed to the male character you played as in the first one. Hopefully there's a little bit more to it than just that and they've changed a few bits because the first game was pretty decent, albeit it did get a bit frustrating having to constantly hide from the monster, which you do find in games such as this from time to time. So that's our look for the week ahead then. Is it a wallet buster? I don't know about that, but there's some decent games coming for sure. Summer of Mara, The Ruiner, Burnout, hopefully will be a good port, and Hack on Iwa, Explorer Plus, just for the lols. Anyway, a quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you, of course, for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, let us know which of these you're picking up, if any, and until next time, happy gaming.